Good afternoon. Uh, we are fortunate this afternoon to have with us uh, Dr. Conti Rai uh, to continue this series on the intellectual oral history of CLL. I've had the opportunity of meeting with Dr. Rai on two previous occasions and have some notes uh, from that time. Um, Dr. Rai, I'm going to start uh, with kind of uh, three, three major divisions. Um, uh, one is that many of the investigators in chronic lymphocytic leukemia and CLL are not just experts in CLL, uh, they are also hematologists and they've had either parallel lives and other aspects of hematology. Uh, and in your case, uh, uh, before addressing a CLL, I know there was at least two areas that you were, inter that you were active in. One was polycythemia vera, I think the original study group, and you've also had a long association with the treatment of acute leukemia, acute myelogenous leukemia. So I would like I would like you to comment about your experience with the, with those two areas, if you will. Thank you, Jerry, for uh, reminding me that uh, in addition to my interest in chronic lymphocytic leukemia or CLL, I have had a strong interest as well in myeloproliferative diseases and in AML or acute myeloid leukemia. In the chronic myeloproliferative disease category, as you pointed out, historically my interest goes to the time probably in the 1960s when Dr. Wasserman had uh, started or initiated the PBSG or polycythemia vera study group. We, uh, Dr. Wasserman was at Mount Sinai Hospital and Medical College in New York and he had organized a group of investigators throughout the con throughout the world really who started the very first formal study of the natural history of polycythemia and worked towards standardizing the diagnostic criteria and then moved into finding the best possible treatment of this disease. And it was really very gratifying for me as a young investigator to be a part of that group because my own mentor, Dr. Jean Cronkite at Brookhaven National Laboratory and uh, my colleagues who were interested in P. Vera they all helped me immensely in becoming active in Dr. Wasserman's uh, led group. And uh, whatever polycythemia study group uh, did became for the time being in that era, I'm talking about 1960s, 70s, 80s, and even up to early 90s that uh, we were able to put polycythemia vera on a firm footing and before that it was really a completely chaotic situation. In AML or acute myelocytic leukemia, I owe my uh, interest in this fascinating disease to my, in another manner of speaking, another mentor, uh, Jim Holland, Dr. Holland at Mount Sinai Medical Center. He was, when we first started our association, he still was at Roswell Park Cancer Institute in Buffalo. But during the time that I became involved in AML study, the, uh, he had moved to New York and uh, he still continued to remain the chairman of cancer and leukemia group B. And it was then 
that in 1972, I believe, that uh, I was asked to chair a large randomized study to establish whether the 7 and 3 regimen which had just been proposed, but had been tested only in a handful of patients to conduct a large randomized multi institutional group wide CLGB wide study to find out whether cytosine arabinoside given by continuous infusion over a 7 day period along with donorubicin or the anthracycline used in AML then given for 3 days successively was superior to the same drugs given for 5 days and 2 days respectively. And indeed it was a very heady time because in the 1970s we just did not know how to achieve the maximum incidence of complete remission, but we all knew that if we achieved a complete remission in AML, we were offering a longer life expectancy to our patients. So, that it took us um, approximately two and a half, three years to accrue the statistically needed uh, number of patients. And uh, I was uh, very gratified because I learned a, in a lot in clinical trials, the procedures, the requirements of discipline to get the data properly collected and analyzed and to publish. And uh, the statistician in CLGB were most helpful and they became my teachers in manner of speaking. And that launched me as uh, a, a, a researcher, a clinical investigator in hematology. Uh, I, I made a copy of the uh, AML oh. 7 3 paper. Yeah. Uh, just to refresh your memory. Okay. Uh, now, it's also my recollection uh, that um, ASCO uh, celebrated its 25th birthday, uh, perhaps uh, last year. In, or 50th. 50th birthday. And that ASH celebrated in 2008. Uh, and uh, ASCO did it a year before oh, that, I th oh, or a year after. A anyway, I, th yeah. I think in one in one or both of those celebrations, uh, the treatment of AML uh, was, was highlighted. Yeah, and uh, perhaps uh, a series of papers leading up to this yeah. paper. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, bas I basically wanted to uh, document that. Uh, that in addition to CLL, uh, you have you've had wider hematological uh, interest. Oh yes, yeah. And and perhaps uh, in that sense, uh, you have said that the uh, the staging of CLL, the clinical staging of CLL, was perhaps the beginning of the modern era of uh, what we've come to learn about CLL. Uh, jumping ahead from the staging system, which we, which we will come back to, uh, I wanted to ask about uh, the, I think the major comparative study uh, that might be parallel to AML would be the Fudarabine chlorambucil study, I believe from 2000 uh, in the New England Journal. Would you comment on how that came about, how that study came to be, the history behind it? Yes. Uh, the point where in CLL where we were in the early 90s when fludarabine it's really hard to believe that we have come more than 20 years since that time when fludarabine had become uh, 
recognized as a very powerful drug in CLL and had been approved by the FDA for patients who had failed chlorambucil because <coughs> chlorambucil continues to remain as the FDA approved first line treatment in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. What we did in CLGB was to test whether fludarabine indeed was superior drug to chlorambucil in frontline treatment and uh, it became an enormous effort. It required a lot of practically a year of planning fludarabine versus chlorambucil 